You know, that is very interesting because when I talk to civil engineers about collecting uh, rainwater from the roof and they insist that it has to be done through area drains. So I must go back and talk to them about using rain gardens instead because they don't take into account rain gardens when they do their calculations. Okay. There's, because... another, there's another designer down here who's done quite a few. She should have been on this webinar, but maybe she had a conflict. But she's got pretty much every... Um, design she has she persuades the client to put in a rain garden <laughs> <laughs> excellent yeah that's, that's excellent. what i want to do people don't re realize rain barrels are just amazing especially when you don't have much rain in colorado though we can't take but only i think it's 250 gallon rain barrels off the roof i don't know what it's like in california can you take more rain off the roof i think I have can. never I think used it. Colorado's very strict Colorado's, yeah, they recently passed within the last year, though, that we can at least have two rain barrels, 50 gallons on either side of the house or wherever. But before that, you couldn't even get the rain water off the roof. It could be the Bay Area. Um, we are very worried about pollutants into the Bay. So we have a stipulation, I believe, that each lot needs to um, not be dumping any of its rainwater into the sewage or the, the drain system. You're supposed to self-contain mm -hmm. all your water and soak it in. Yeah, but That's rain wonderful. barrels are, are also expensive. You know, I've only used them on a couple of projects, especially uh, if there is a lot of fruit trees and like higher water use trees, then you can use them to show that you're reusing the water. I in thought in that case, you would just dump your rainwater into mulch basins around each tree. Well, this, this job has an irrigation system, so it's, you know, the water goes to the tank and then it's recirculated for irrigation. And if there's no because, water, then it comes directly from potable water. Because as soon as you save water, you've got 24 hours before it turns into black water, right? Yeah, I know, but the, this, this job has like two very large, I think it's like 4,000 or 8,000 gallons, I don't remember. But it's because they're thinking of it more as a long-term storage thing. They don't think of it as, you know. Like a cistern, almost. Yeah. Like, like a cistern. cistern, yeah. There's all types of storage. You know, when we did the underground storage in some of those schools, they, they held that water for months before yeah. they... Where did you see that, Grace, that it becomes black water? It's some kind of definition. I mean, unless, um, I don't know if you pre-filter it before you store it, and then maybe you do something when you're using it. And maybe this is particularly strict if you're trying to use it as an emergency water storage for your own use. So gardening oh, may be different. Good. Yeah. But yeah, gardening we can have about 24 hours and it designated as black water. Oh, wow. Good. Yeah, That's I didn't know really that. Wild. Yeah, I didn't either. Is that just California? I don't know. I should look that up. It's just a quote I've heard bandied around, and we can see what the definition of black water is. I, I imagine if there's microbes, maybe anaerobic microbes, they could proliferate. Yeah, it could be like kind of like a breeding ground if it's like stored for too long. But then if it's not exposed, then I don't think mosquitoes would be a problem because these are right. It's not going to nest mosquitoes in it if it's if it's not open if it's contained. Right. But I guess there's other um, pathogens that you might worry about, like these anaerobic microbes. Algae. Mm -hmm. Well, well algae, you need sun usually, but... Yeah, you usually need the sun to kill that. But there's other, I think there's other organisms that can proliferate in a tank of water. Because you start with a tank and it's got some seed microbes and they, you know, expen exponentially multiply given the mm -hmm. situation. There must be some way to treat it, right? There's some way to purify it, like I use uh, chlorine or something. Sometimes people filter it before it goes into rain barrels, so you mm -hmm. get it, right. um, the leaf debris out. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, There's filtration systems on top, you know, on the tanks or before it gets into the tanks that'll cleanse it and exit cleansing mm -hmm. that we've used. I mean, Harold's used that. Raheen on some of our projects where the filter is before and after the irrigation. Oh, when, okay. when we're, yeah, right. when we're uh, harvesting it either from the roof or from rain off, runoff and he filters it because, because it'll clog the drip system for sure. Right. That's the issue. Yeah. Especially. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. we filter it and they're really not expensive to put the filters on before and after. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm I mean, sure. it, you it, have it, technically black water, if you can just dump it into 
mulch basins around your plants and um, let the soil microbes take care of mm -hmm. any issues. Yeah, usually yeah. even for fruit trees, I don't I don't use bubblers because it increases the amount of water quite a bit. So I just use uh, drip irrigation. If you have a pipe, it better be all subterranean because of contamination with humans, possibly, with people getting some disease from it. When you say subterranean, are you talking about uh, drip irrigation or something? I else? guess. So that means you would have to filter it before you put it through your irrigation system. So a lot of Yeah, yeah. I, I need to check on that. Well, so uh, does anybody else have any questions? Shelki, you joined? Yes, I joined. Thank you. Yeah, this is, uh, this is very good. I actually have designed quite a few rain gardens uh, for my projects. What I found out was that um, most people, they did not know about rain garden. They knew nothing about that. Yeah. After I told them about it and told them about the benefits, and I found almost everyone um, took the idea quite well. They all, all of them accepted my recommendation and went ahead and built rain gardens. Yeah. And them turned out to be um, very pretty, very nice. Yeah. So I think definitely it's a big opportunity for education and for um, us as uh, landscape designers to be yeah. there and tell uh, all these people. And people would love to do it. Yeah. It's just. I, I also see, find the same thing. Like they, they, they've never heard of no more grass. And when I tell them, okay, because artificial grass is so popular, and you tell them, okay, no more grass is a good option for low-lying, anything that's kind of lower than the house. They, they immediately, they like the idea. And when they see it growing, they, they love it, you know, but they don't know about it. So I think education is very important to tell people about this. You know, they, these are the options that you have. You don't have to do the ugly lawn or the ugly um, artificial grass. You can, you can do like, like a beautiful low maintenance garden that doesn't look wild or weedy. You know, one of the things, Rahina, that when we were teaching those kids that and the teachers and they were developing the bioswales and rain gardens, they were really excited to go back home to in Monterey and Salinas and I think Sand City. They, I mean, they were, those kids were from all around and they were excited to go back and teach your parents. Yeah. They really wanted that's, to start That's the right home. age. I, I know, just go like, yeah, they were young teenagers, you know. And um, it comes from from educating the youth and yeah. letting them really get out in the community and do community projects. Yeah. Uh, and then they can experiment and come back and kind of teach us again. You know, I mean, they're doing it. If they do it a lot in their community, then they can, they're learning and they can fill us with knowledge. So it goes back and forth. That's why people yeah. are so excited about doing school projects and working with kids because you got, you got a chance to educate these people who are quite young and then they go and yeah, bring it back home and hopefully into the community. Uh, there's a group, there's a nonprofit here, Green. Uh, I think it's uh, something to do with um, sustainable schools. Uh, I met the lady at one of the uh, Foothill College. Yeah. yeah, she said that they, they do a lot of work in around uh, Gamble Garden, you know, around <laughs> Palo Alto and a lot of schools there. And, and yeah. I was interested, but it was mostly, uh, they're not so much into the design part. They're more into the education part. So right. they, just, they just work with little kids and classrooms and they're more into the educational part. So I did, I did uh, introduce myself, but... It seems like they have like a curriculum already going. Yeah, they do have curriculum. It must include a, a design unit of some sort, though, I imagine. I don't know if y'all have heard of the, the aquaponics group that's over there in California. I'm trying to think of their name, but they go around and they install uh, aquaponics systems into the schools and they use it as CSAs. And they, they actually do it like a fund raising funds for the school. I can't think of the name of them, but I'll try to get that information and get it to you, Rahina. They were becoming huge, huge in the Monterey Peninsula area and aquaponics uh, systems and installing the, they were actually getting grants and putting okay. in greenhouses in the schools and doing CSAs to the parents when they come to pick the kids up, they'd get their box of vegetables oh, okay. that their children learned how to grow food through, oh, okay. through the water, through the fish. And it was a fabulous program. I think they were having a big greenhouse in, is it full, full moon, full bay out there? 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Half Moon, Half Moon Bay. Half, half moon, moon Bay, bay. sorry, yeah. Half Moon Bay. <laughs> they had like 10 green, ten greenhouses that were aquaponic greenhouses that I worked with them on. And we were trying to incorporate oh, that okay. in our school projects, too. It was a oh, fabulous okay. program. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've seen that place. They they sell plants, and but they have mostly mm -hmm. these aquaponics. They work with restaurants, mostly, you know, mm -hmm. they're... they're yeah. Or into like setting up restaurants to, to do this aquaponic hydroponics or something. Uh, the aquaponics, well, they have fish tanks. The fish tanks yeah. circulate, give the poop, and then they filter and make fertilizer. And they grow lettuce like crazy in 30 to 60 days, full heads of lettuce through these PVC oh pipes. It was, it was amazing. I'll yeah, try to yeah. get some pictures and send it to you. These are like standalone items. You know, I usually don't specify them unless the owner asks for something. But they they can be done in a greenhouse, like indoor, outdoor kind of situation. You don't mm -hmm. have to be like outside for the aquaponics. I think they're mostly installed inside, right? Inside a greenhouse. Yeah, they're mostly in, installed inside of greenhouses. And then there's a series of tanks with the fish and then that sends the water into large flat like pallet tables which then have the plants in in a piping system growing out of yeah. so it's not in the ground it's all yeah it's all indoors and they were they were having those greenhouses put in these schools they were getting it funded by the government by California to put these in the schools and then the, the kids were learning how to do aquaponics, working in the greenhouses, getting credits, making money for their for their different school clubs. And then mm -hmm. they were selling it to the parents when they come picked up the kids. It was a great program. Yeah, I wish, I, you know, I think I'm more into design, but I wish I was more into education that way. I think it would be easier to convince the parents, you know, through the kids. I, I think but, the kids uh, convince the parents because they're learning this stuff. and They go home excited and tell them this is what we learned today, you know, and they're, yeah, yeah. And they're getting um, they're getting their grades and it's exciting. It's fun. They're getting outside and learning a yeah. lot about about how to grow how to grow agriculture you know because it's not all about it, it is pretty plants i love nature and i love beauty but growing food is you know a part of of our, our of landscaping and agriculture i think it all blends together i i just yeah. love seeing the kids interested in all of it and these children when we were teaching them at Ord terrace what to do they loved that they were that this water stormwater system was helping them keep their ocean clean and their yeah. and their mammals and their whales from dying and you know we just described all of that and they just loved yeah. it they took a lot of pride in that so did uh, did all of you have some kind of gardening class in school in high school or in middle school did your high school incorporate gardening as part of the curriculum? So I, um, for my daughter's school, I actually um, give, give some presentations to them, including uh, rainwater harvesting and also okay. uh, and help them and organize the kids to design and build veggie gardens with native plants. I oh, organize, okay. yeah, I organize these classes and just telling them what to plant. I let them, I presented all the choices uh, including yeah. the veggie choice let them pay oh, okay, and good. they love it and on yeah. the plan day i prepared the um, garden beds in advance but then they got uh -huh. to just come in and, and the kids really oh, okay. love it i think that's that's a very effective way uh, you know i would uh, i would like to look into like some kind of semi-educational like design and education like combining the two okay it looks like we are over time Thank you all for mm -hmm. joining in. Anybody want to say anything? Joanne, you look like you wanted to say something. I'm curious, like Selkie, Selkie, where are yes. you located over there? Yeah. I'm here um, in South Bay. In South Bay? Yeah, Cupertino, San Jose, Palo Alto. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, you, you're, are you the one with, uh, with the irrigation, uh, low water gardens? Yeah, my business uh, is called watereffictiongardens.com. Yes, um, yes, I saw that. Yeah. So you're welcome to just email me, talk to me. Um, it's uh, shelky at watereffictiongardens.com. Would love to exchange more ideas and yeah, just how to let more people build a water efficient garden and rain gardens. 
I would just add really quickly that、um, there's another education opportunity is with the contractors and the homeowners as well. A lot of times,、um, especially when building backyards, a lot of time when they need、uh, hardscapes, they just go ahead and they just say, "Oh,、um, I, I, for simplicity, I will just put some concrete there." And <laughs> and the contractors like that because that's simple to do.、Um, that's how they know well about and all that. And yeah. For that, I always tell them, no, don't do concrete, do pavers, or do all these other permeable choices. And with that, and lots of times they did listen and change their mind. Yeah, think that's another big opportunity. People did not realize that、um, there is a difference between permeable and impermeable surfaces, and how that impacts the environment. They it、yeah. never occurred to them there is an impact there. So as I see it, that's another big、uh, opportunity for education. Yeah, we should talk to talk to CLCA and get get some CEUs educational credits. I've I've done CEUs for AIA, and they are very amenable to like these lunch and learns, but not so much to contractors. Contractors to me are a little bit more difficult to teach. <laughs> Just it's like a, their mindset, huh? <laughs> yeah, they 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 think that they know everything, and I'm like, okay, wait wait a minute, because part of it is also cost based. They make a lot more money if they fill the whole house with concrete. So they're like, why? Why should we learn about plants? You know, we don't we don't make too much money on planting. So, but if you can cut down concrete、right. costs, then that would be good. So, well, thank you、yeah. very much, Rahina. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you all for joining in today.